Today is the High Holy Day, first day of unleavened bread. Last evening was the beginning of the Passover feast. It was a celebration to start the feast off, the Passover meal, reflecting on coming out of Egypt in our own lives all the different lies, the darkness that the Lord God, Jehovah, has brought us out of by His saving hand, by His Son, by the Passover, that we are brought out of bondage. And thinking back, all things personally come out of to get the truth. Growing up in a false religion, great false church, Roman Catholic Church. Being born into that and having all your family in that and nobody really understanding the Word of God or reading the Word of God at all. Just going through the motions of the religion that you were born into. And not understanding anything really. Just going by the what was passed down to you from different generations. Being called out of that by God to come to His Word to understand his truth. Years later being tried through another organization which looked at the time like the genuine truth but soon became apparent they were in great error. God bringing me out of that in order to seek Him with a whole heart to understand His Word, to cling to His Word, to understand the truth about the Passover. Yes, you were the Messiah. You see clearly the timing, the meaning behind everything Jehovah has given in His Word. It's truly a blessing. We think about those things and meditate on those things at the beginning of the Passover feast because. Jehovah brings people out of Egypt today in their lives. He does this for His people. He brings His people out of darkness and confusion and error, and falsehood. He brings them out. And He says to diligently keep His commandments, His precepts. And that is life. And he continues to bless his people with great treasure from heaven, from his word. And I want to start out today in Exodus 12. Exodus 12, verse 18. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at even, that is, last night, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. 
For whoever eats that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. You shall eat nothing leavened. And in all your habitations shall you eat unleavened bread. We're going over the last few Bible studies we've done. The timing, starting out with how God tells time, the first month, very important. And then how God shows his Passover in Christ at the time of Christ's death. And then we can celebrate the feast with a true understanding of things. What Christ, the head of the church, has done for his people in giving his life for his people. The sacrifice for sin. And it is an amazing blessing to see these things, especially in this time in a world that is so far from God. We'll go to Leviticus chapter 23 and read from the Septuagint version. That is the Greek Old Testament. Verse 9, Leviticus 23, And Jehovah spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and you shall say to them, When you shall enter into the land which I give you, and reap the harvest of it, then you shall bring a sheaf, the first fruits of your harvest, to the priest. He shall lift up the sheaf before Jehovah to be accepted for you. We understand who our high priest is, Yeshua, by his sacrifice, by what he has done, we are accepted of God. We have the forgiveness of sins. We are reconciled to God, the Father, Jehovah. And he is the high priest. He shall lift up the sheaf before Jehovah to be accepted for you on the morrow of the first day the priest shall lift it up so again we talk about this every year as well uh, people do not understand the true timing of Pentecost because they do not understand the, the true timing of the wave sheep and the truth is that Passover and Pentecost are intimately linked together. There is no break in the timing. Uh, most people think today in many, many church groups that you have to wait until the day after the weekly Sabbath during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And that is not true. The truth of the matter is that you start counting from the point when the sickle is put to the grain for the wave sheaf. And that is the day after this first day, this first high day, this first high Sabbath, first day of unleavened bread. And the Septuagint makes that very clear. Septuagint, again, is the Old Testament translated in Koan Greek and um, the Septuagint translates the 70 it's about 70 rabbis or 70 teachers rather of the day who were commissioned by Ptolemy Philadelphus who was the king in, in uh, Egypt he commissioned them 
to write the law of Moses and he did he separated them into different chambers and they didn't know even know what they were there for and he put them to work on writing these translations and they all came out perfectly it's an amazing thing that God had done at that time this 300 about 2 to 300 years prior to Jesus Christ this is a very accurate translation and in this translation it makes it very clear when the sheep is to be waved now it's not really up for debate or anything churches are just they're in error they don't understand it's hidden to them because there's something going on there's something wrong there is transgression and until that transgression is repented of people are in darkness and they cannot accept the truth but as I said as we re read here verse 10 and you shall enter into the land which I give you and reap the harvest of it and you shall bring a sheaf the first fruits of your harvest to the priest he shall lift up the sheaf before Jehovah to be accepted for you on the morrow of the first day the priest shall lift it up the first day is this day again the first day of unleavened bread the high Sabbath not the weekly Sabbath tomorrow of the first day the priest shall lift it up and you shall offer on that day on which you bring the sheaf the lamb without blemish of a year old for a whole burnt offering to the Lord verse 15 you shall number to yourselves from the day after the Sabbath from the day on which you shall offer the sheaf of the heave offering seven full weeks until the morrow after the last week you shall number fifty days and shall bring a new meat offering to Jehovah you shall bring from your dwelling loaves as a heave offering two loaves they shall be of two tenths portion of fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven of the first fruits to Jehovah. So we understand the first fruits. God's people, first in the kingdom, the 144,000, who are made up of the saints and the prophets of old. There are some that are living now that will be added to that number at the return of Christ. And they will rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years over mankind in the millennial reign. Mankind will still exist at that point. The kingdom of God will be on earth. Spiritual powers of this current world will be done away with. Powers and principalities that exist now will not be in that time but the Lord will Jehovah will reign supreme Messiah will reign supreme and the saints we read that in the book of Daniel that all nations will come and go up and seek God. And I want to talk about, as we have been, 
what has happened to God's people over the years. As we read in Daniel last time, many people will be tried, purged, and made white up until the end. There is many things that we go through in order to get the truth. We read Daniel 12. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on the side of the bank of the river and the other on the other side of the bank of the river. One said to the man clothed in linen, which was on the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was on the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand toward heaven, and swore by him that lives forever and ever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter, to shatter the power, of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then I said, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? He said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from that time, from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waits and comes to the thousand three hundred thirty-five days. But go your way till the end be, for you shall rest and stand in your lot at the end of days. Let's go to Matthew 24. When you therefore, verse 15, shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoever reads, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. So. We, we must understand these things are spiritual and it takes spiritual eyes to see them. The abomination of desolation stand in the holy place, the place of Christ. This is something that people have to see for themselves. I cannot give this to anybody. I can try and explain it to you, but it doesn't really help. Something you have to go through. You have to see the abomination for yourself. What does God call abomination? in his word well Jehovah says let's see here one second in Proverbs chapter 6 Proverbs chapter 6. Verse 
verse 16. These six things does Jehovah hate. Yes. Seven. The number of completeness. Seven. Are an abomination to him. A proud look. A lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaks lies. And he that sows discord among brothers. Now, I myself have known somebody and seen somebody in the place of Christ who fits this description perfectly, who is an abomination before God and claims to be an apostle of Jesus Christ and a prophet. Well, this person was proved false by the Word of God many, many times. Never repented, but has gone after money, tithes, and his own pride. And that will be the end of him. His own way shall be brought upon his head by the end of this. You out there have to experience these things and see these things for yourself. I can't just tell you what these things are. Verse 20. My son, keep your father's commandments forsake not the law of your mother bind them continually on your heart and tie them about your neck when you go it shall lead you when you sleep it shall keep you and when you wake it shall talk with you for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep you from the evil woman now, who is the evil woman? Now, in this world today, I've met many evil women in my life. Women that really, they don't know God, and they go about, and men do the same. They don't know what they're doing in this life at all but the woman being spoken of here it's not a physical woman this is speaking of a church a false church in the book of Revelation God says there are two, two types of women, two types of churches. There is a great whore church, a harlot, a mother of harlots. It's called Mystery Babylon. And there is God's church, a faithful church, a faithful woman. You have two types. And this is what is being spoken of here. To keep you from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman, the stranger. 
Lust not after her beauty in your heart, neither let her take you with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? We are to put on the white robes of righteousness. We are to understand the commandments of God. Can one go on hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goes into his neighbor's wife, whoever touches her, shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his life, his soul, when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whosoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He that does it destroys his own life. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though you give many gifts. Adulterers will be judged. Spiritual adultery is the heart of the matter, though. So, abomination in the churches, in the holy place, coming in the name of Christ, Matthew 24. Verse 9. And shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. He that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. We just read in Daniel 12, Blessed is he that waits and comes to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Must endure. But you see these these numbers here, these prophecies have been talked about throughout what is called Christianity today. And people speculate on these things. But what they don't realize is this is something you have to come to as an individual and recognize. This time period right here It's an individual thing. It's not meant to be the same time for everybody. You understand what I'm saying? You have to see the abomination and come out of that abomination, flee out of it, so God. And work with you. You have to endure so you can know the truth.
bear with me. Go to James, chapter 1, James chapter 1, verse, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraids not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven by the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Jehovah. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flowers of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it wither the grass and the flower thereof falls, and the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man take your crown. We must come out of following man and follow the Word of God. This is why we go over all these things about timing. Some people may say, oh, it doesn't matter, you know. When you're new to information, you're tried in it. It does matter. Whether it comes sooner or later, you will be tried in everything you hear from God. Timing matters. We want to keep Jehovah's appointed times properly, because if we are not, that's sin. That's transgression of the law. He says over and over again in his word that we should keep his times according to exactly what he says. There are many examples in scripture of people going astray. We can go back and look at Jeroboam who made a feast out of his own heart and didn't follow God. And the whole northern kingdom of Israel, the whole ten tribe northern kingdom was cut off from God by that major example.
and the repercussions of that have gone through the centuries to our day today where traditional Christianity does not understand the appointed times and seasons of Jehovah. They keep pagan holidays. They have no idea of the plan of God. Yes, they can read things in the Bible. Yes, people can live and strive to live a better life to one another. But when it comes down to it, there is so much missing. They do not really understand the plan of God at all. They do not really understand the gospel of the kingdom of God that is going to come to this earth and rule over mankind. They are concerned with people floating to heaven or people going to hell. And they just have no concept of what God is really talking about in scripture. And those things have stemmed from way, way back. Now, spiritual Judah has also transgressed and had pride. Talk about the worldwide church of God and their leaders. All of their leaders claim to be, for this is just one church for example, all of their leaders claim to be prophets and apostles, yet they do not know when Passover is, they do not know when Pentecost is, they follow a Jewish calendar made by the rabbis. Everything we've gone over, they are following the beast. As I have tried to tell you, the beast changes times and laws of the Most High. And he has God's holy people in captivity. Now people don't understand these prophecies because their ministers, for the most part, have them always looking at stuff going on in the world. So they do not recognize what's going on right in front of their face. They've been led astray and deceived. Bear with me. To Timothy chapter 3 but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived they themselves are deceived and they are deceiving others and when the truth comes when the witness comes to them and they are told the truth. Do they repent? The truth falls in the streets. It's trampled underfoot. They don't see it. They don't get it. They are constantly waiting for other things. Always learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. That is a big problem for them. The abomination of desolation. Second Peter chapter two. <clears throat> but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. You see, we're bought the precious blood of Christ.
and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness they shall with feigned words make merchandise of you. Now I've talked about the beast ruling over God's people 666 you cannot buy or sell without the mark of the beast again another thing that the so many ideas in the world what is it going to be is it going to be a shot in the arm is it going to be a microchip in the in the hand is it a blah 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 nonsense that's not the word of god See what I mean? These people have no idea what they're talking about. Let me just tell you, Satan the devil, the, advers the adversary, has no problem with people believing those things and promoting them in the world. Why does he promote that in the world? Because he wants you to be concerned with that until the day you perish instead of repenting and knowing the truth. He wants you to constantly be worried about these things so you never actually come to understand them. The truth is, the mark, the seal of God is Yeshua, the Messiah, the Passover. We've read those things many times. It's a sign on your head and hand. It's the seal of God. And it's the commandments of God, which are a seal. Seal the law among my disciples. All throughout Scripture, these things are right there in people's face, but they're hidden because people who transgress the law will not be shown. the truth they don't deserve it with feigned words they make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingers not and their damnation slumbers not for if God spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down into Tartarus and did delivered them into chains of darkness chains of darkness to be reserved to judgment and spared not the old world but saved Noah the eighth person a preacher of righteousness bringing the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow And deliver just Lot, verse 7, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished. Verse 10, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh. You see here, them that walk after the flesh. Unclean. Carnally minded. Having their mind set on this current age, this world. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. Verse 14, having eyes full of adultery. Again, talking about spiritual adultery here. This is not about the world here. 
Okay, this is about God's people who have to deal with this spiritually. It's spiritual adultery. The world as a, <laughs> the world has nothing but adulterers today and fornicators. Those are if we're talking about physical things. We're not talking about physical things. You cannot turn the television on without seeing adultery and fornication on every single television channel, every program. And it wants to program you out there to be the same as Satan's device in this 21st century, and the telephones and the cell phones that corrupt, corrupt the youth, bring them into a bondage that they are have no idea, far from understanding. We are at the end, brethren. This is the end. These are the last days. Make sure you're not sleeping. Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin even when the truth comes to them. Beguiling unstable slow souls. So people who are not sturdy on the word of God. They're not stable. They don't know how to walk yet. They're beguiled by these teachers. Heart they've exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children which have forsaken the right way and have gone astray following the way of Balaam who love the wages of unrighteousness these are wells without water clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever When they speak great swelling words of vanity, nonsense, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean, escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty and freedom, they themselves are the servants of corruption, of whom if a man is overcome, of the same as he brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it happened to them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So dead again, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Jude. Jude chapter 1. Book of Jude. Oh, let's see here. Jude verse 1. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend 
earnestly for the faith which was once once delivered to the saints for certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation ungodly men who turn the grace of our Lord God into lewdness and deny the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ but I want to remind you though you once knew this that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who didn't believe and the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode he is reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day again the examples here of those who fall away from God men and angels Verse 12, these are spots in your love feasts. While they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves, they are clouds without water, carried about with winds, late autumn trees with, without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea foaming up their own shame wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever verse 14 now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men also saying behold the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment on all to convict all who are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which which they have committed So, speaking of the abomination in the holy place, you must understand for yourself, in your own life, you must see it for yourself. When you do, you must flee from it and understand the truth. Because there is great tribulation coming on those who are in Jerusalem, in Judea, spiritually, in the place of Christ. And you want to recognize the truth before that comes. Otherwise, you are taken away with it when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies then know that the desolation thereof is near Luke chapter 21 verse 20 then let them which were which are in Judea flee to the mountains let them which are in the middle of it depart out and let them that are in the countries not enter into it for these be the days of vengeance, that all things that are written may be fulfilled. But woe to them with, that are with child, and to them that give suck. This is speaking of the teachers. Great warning given to teachers. Great warning. Not all should be teachers. Seen even in recent times, people who made themselves teachers way too soon. They were unstable and they've fallen away already. Just babes. Not ready yet. 
But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath on this people. They shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led with captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Trodden down of the Gentiles. Just because somebody says the name of Christ does not mean they are genuine. Does not mean they are a spiritual Jew. But it is the word of God, the commandments of God, that must be understood to see through the lies. Matthew 24. Then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And if any man say to you, See, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs, false messiahs, we look out today, they are everywhere. They are everywhere. And false prophets, they are everywhere. And shall show great signs and wonders, so that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I'm told, I've told you before. Daniel chapter 9 70 weeks verse 24 are determined on your people and on your holy city the holy city Jerusalem what does that mean for us today not talking about the land today we have to understand the holy city to finish the transgression to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy this is speaking of the second coming of Christ many people do not understand that but that is exactly the time here Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem to Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. 69 weeks. But what is this word here? 70 weeks, verse 24. word here in the Hebrew for weeks is strong 7620 and it's Shabua a period of seven to be days years or week
After sundown today, we start the count to Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks. That count starts after the High Holy Sabbath, first day of unleavened bread. Continuing on here, Daniel chapter 9. Seventy Shabua are determined on your people. And it says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem to the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks, and three score and two weeks. Sixty-nine weeks, sixty-nine Shabuah. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in trouble, troublous times. I'll go to Revelation chapter 11. Verse 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Isaiah 59, 14. Isaiah chapter 59. Let's start in verse 1. Behold, Jehovah's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue has muttered perverseness. None calls for justice, nor any pleads for the truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cocktrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eats their eggs dies. They that which is crushed breaks out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Do we, do we remember what we read before? Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. Do we remember Proverbs chapter 6. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whoever goes therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither does justice overtake us. We wait for the light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall, 
like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday, as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against Jehovah and departing away from our God, speaking oppression, revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward and justice stands afar off. Truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. Yes, truth fails. He that departs from evil makes himself a prey. Jehovah saw it and displeased him that there was no judgment. Truth is fallen in the street. Revelation 11. Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom, which is spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So Jerusalem, spiritual Jerusalem. Daniel chapter 9. The street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. The sacrifice of Christ the Passover as we have been speaking on so important to understand and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and to the end of the war desolations are determined. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the middle of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even to the consummation, and that determined shall be poured out on the desolate. You do not want to be in that situation. We're going to talk more about this 70 weeks and it's relation to Pentecost Shavuot and the keeping of Pentecost at the proper time for God's people
Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 5. Run you to and fro in the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if you can find a man, if there be any that executes judgment, that seeks the truth, and I will pardon it. And though they say, Jehovah lives, surely they swear falsely. O Lord, are not your eyes on the truth? You've stricken them, but they have not grieved. You have consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Therefore I said, Surely these are poor, they are foolish, for they know not the way of Jehovah, nor the judgment of their God. I will get me to the great men, and will speak to them. For they have known the way of the Lord, and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke, and burst the bonds. Why, a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Everyone that goes out there shall be torn to pieces, because their transgressions are many, and their backslidings are increased. Verse 13, And their prophets shall become wind. The word is not in them, thus shall it be done to them. See, I will bring a nation on you from afar, O house of Israel. It is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language you know not, neither understand what they say. Fear you not me, verse 22, says Jehovah. Will you not tremble at my presence? Verse 23, but this people has a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither do they say in their heart, let us now fear Jehovah our God that gives rain, both the former and the latter in his season. He reserves to us the appointed weeks of harvest. He reserves to us the appointed weeks of harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withheld good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lie in wait and set snares. They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they've become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat, yes, they shine. They overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. In the right of the needy they do not judge. Shall I not visit for these things? says Jehovah, shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. What will you do in the end thereof? That is the question. So, let us understand the Word of God. Let us keep this feast properly and rejoice. Rejoice that we have been given the truth to know God, know His times and seasons. Again, the Count of Pentecost starts 
after sundown today. After the first day, first high Holy Sabbath. And that is the truth. It's a rare thing to understand in this world at this point. But it is the truth. 